Eu queria cumprimentar. I'd like first to greet all the friends of Socialist China and also greet Radhika Desai and Carlos Martinez. In uh, their names, I uh, greet all everyone who's in here. I'd just like to give one special greet to Elias Jabor, who is here present, and that I considered will give uh, some strong contributions in this uh, discussion on socialism in the 21st century. I'd like to say, to regard the Bra Brazilian relation, uh, Brazil always had a position of absolute independence with regards to it, international relation with all countries in the world and one strategic and prioritary relation with the BRIC countries. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And in this regard, we do defend and posit ourselves in an international framework of conflict, which since the crisis of 2008, this friction has been growing starting from this correction attrictions between uh, the united states and china have increased they were very strong during the obama administration uh, and and the trans-pacific uh, partnership which was uh, an attempt to contention china and it became very aggressive during the trump administration after the biden administration took office china u.s relation while more diplomatic in appearance, so divisions within, yeah, they are critical and very conflictuous. When comparing China and the US in their COVID response in economic recovery, in education, in science and technology, in domestic governance and global governance, it seems fair to say that the balance of competition is in independently of being pro or against socialism is increasingly tilted, tilting towards China. In the response to COVID, the very disappointing result in the US contrasts sharply with the situation in China, which has had greater control over the spread of the virus, reducing the number of infections and deaths. The North American government on its turn could not reduce the deadly effects of the disease in the country. And the uh, US became one of the countries with the biggest amount of uh, death. China has also actively participated in international cooperation, supporting the COVAX facility and the World Health Organization, HWO, proposing to make COVID vaccines a global public good and providing vaccines and PPE to other countries. These movements evidenced a greater soft power of China. In economic recovery and development, the US was also overshadowed by China. The year 2020 has seen a 27.7 20 increase in China's trade surplus over the previous year, an increase in its foreign exchange reserve and a 2.3 increase in its GDP a stark contrast to the 4% retraction and 10% from the US and Europe, respectively. At the present time, China's neutral and considered position regarding the conflict of Ukraine in defense of peace, in respect of the sovereignty of countries and registering a strong critique on the contribution, the consistent contribution of NATO to the contribution of the war, it contrasts with the war mongering position of the US and the European submissive position. In the early 90s, when the Cold War ended, China's and United States share of the GDP in the world was uh, respectively 3.86 in China and 20.6% in the United States. In 2018, the US was reduced by 15%, while that of the China rose to 18.6% in PPP purchasing power, power parity terms. China's economic size will likely surpass 
it will surpass the North American by 2030, which uh, has become It had a massive loss of density, especially regarding its deindustrialization and financiarization. Uh, China, on its turns, became the factor of the world, which allows her a huge capacity of potentializing the fourth industrial revolution. And it has surprised the world as entering in this moderately prosperous economic, lifting 600 million Chinese people out of absolute proof in a, a doubtless, in a, in, a sim, in a true symbol for the search of equity. In the area of education, which is something I would like to uh, put my attention, the gap between the two countries is rapidly decreasing. The United States remains a reference in basic science due to its excellent research institutions uh, led by national laboratories, uh, some uh, related to the Department of State and li large private universities. Still, US investments in these fields in the realm of education, science and technology has been reduced by almost half comparing to the Reagan era investment. Only 5% of college students in the US in, are studying engineering, while the number in China is about a third. Education, by the way, has always played a prominent role in the Chinese civilization over, over the centuries. And science, technolo dev technological development and innovation are considered today uh, by the PCC a key factor in achieving the socialist modernization by 2035 and 2049. China's educational effort in the recent decades has been matching and even surpassing the United States in critical areas to scientific innovation, which includes engineer, computer science, and mathematics. The number of scientists and engineers produced by China is six times higher than that of the US, surpassing, if we, if we add, if we combine, the US, EU, Japan, and UK, all of them together. The number of PhDs in, uh, in STEM science It's the double that of America. In, air, in high tech areas, competition is fierce. China is doing pretty well in artificial intelligence, 5G, Internet of Things, smart cities, digital currency, and cryptography. China's response to COVID shows the power of the fourth industrial revolution represented by big data and artificial intelligence. China and the US are major competitors in quantum computing, an area considered the holy grail of 21st century. Besides, when it comes to the domestic governance, China has been showing extraordinary events and showing advantages. The fourth uh, industrial revolution, um, which is characterized by the big leap in uh, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and ICT will increase the impacts of all activities, increasing work productivity. China has also accelerated its policy with regards to a society where equity prevails, while in capitalistic countries, including the US, per capita income has concentrated and jobs have stagnated or shrunk. Social wealth is rapidly concentrating at the richest 1% is given richer. China is precisely doing the opposite path. In global governance, the international order put in place after the World War II under the US leadership and consolidated when US dominance was unchallenged, it's now being broken. 
developing countries, which account for more than 50% of the global GDP, are underrepresented in major international organizations such as the IMF and the World Bank. The BRICS and G20 were initiatives that sought to reduce this unfair asymmetry. Compared to the US, China has been more respectful of the role played by international organizations such as the WTO and WHO and international agreements, in, including the Paris Agreement, which obviously is ironic. Trump administration has acted by leading America to distance itself from these international institutions. The Biden administration is trying a damage management policy, but it's not likely that it will be entirely remedied. Until now, US prejudice towards China diffused uh, through all the Western countries with regards to China has been based on erroneous allegations, incorrect. The most important one is that China's development could hardly be sustained because the political system centered on the Communist Party of China would be an insurmountable obstacle to its development. According to this reading, no country, China in particular, and I've heard it from a big authority and Brazil specifically too, no country could develop without embracing uh, fully two pillars, market economy and the system of liberal democracy. The problem is that the Communist Party of China is nothing like what the Communist Party, the Soviet Union became bureaucratic and rigid. And today is among the forces, if not the biggest one, allowing the extraordinary development of the country. The extraordinary development of China jointly with its people and with its civilization. In fact, contrary to what American elites expected, the, the 28 global financial crisis did not took place in China. Instead, it broke out in Western countries. And it was this fact that changed the mindset of sectors in the deep state. Faced with the evidence, they concluded that China's rise must be contained or slowed down. Otherwise, America's dominance, Northern America would be at stake. This containment policy, which intensifies conflict, has proved up until this moment, extremely flawed and harmful to everyone. First, any rational strategist is well aware that the consequences of an all-out war between China and the US are unthinkable. Is it worth noting that there is no more significant geopolitical consequence today bigger than the growing and strategic partnership between China and Russia, which started during the Crimea war? Ironically, it is precisely the maximum U.S. pressure on Russia and NATO and, and all other uh, methods and the containment of China that played a key role in reapproaching these two countries, which has been systematically uh, uh, repressed since Nixon government. Economic sanctions stemming from Russia's annexation of Crimea and now, and now the, the war in Ukraine, in Ukraine are strengthening a new geopolitical pole and accelerating changes that would only come slowly or at least slower. Second, in the financial sector, the US hegemony, the US dollar hegemony faces new challenge. As a global currency, the US dollar holds an irreplaceable position in international trade and payments. This has made the dollar a weapon of retaliation and a tool of extortion against other countries. Here in Latin America, we have 
two examples, terrible examples, 60 years of blockage in Cuba. And now more recently, the, the block, the blockage regarding to Venezuela in a time of pandemic. The US government has been imposing far reaching sanctions on foreign banks, companies uh, against countries that do business against the US wishes with countries like Iran, Venezuela, Cuba, now and Russia and also China and still in a smaller regard, China. They use uh, their uh, national jurisdiction as an as a coercion weapon, international coercion weapon. Given this, and taking into consideration the last uh, events in geopolitical events, it is unlikely that the dollar will remain irreplaceable forever. Uh, yeah, even in the short term, that may be the case. Dollar hegemony is centered on the SWIFT Society for a World, whose mission is to enable the flow of funds between countries, banks, and companies in dollar. The major countries, including China, are still unable to bypass this transfer mechanism, which are made only in dollar. In 2015, China began testing an interbank transfer model called CIPS, yes, with CIPS in Portuguese, which could be considered a new alternative to SWIFT. And this is still, uh, still shallow, still narrow. The willing of SWIFT may be uh, challenged or uh, accelerated now. They believe that what would happen in 10 to 15 years will now uh, took place between three to five years uh, by taking into consideration the events and sections caused by uh, by the US and, and NATO in the Ukraine uh, situation. Beyond that, like several other banks, uh, the people the bank, People's Bank of China has been developing and testing digital currencies for over five years. China's sovereign digital currency or digital RMB is rapidly advancing and can be used in China's domestic market uh, as well as for foreign trade and investment. Recently, uh, Yuan has been accepted not only by Russia, but also Saudi Arabia uh, uh, for the payment of oil, which is um, which shows this is an event very advantageous for this process. Thirdly, this the U.S. strategy of containing China based on the so-called decoupling or decoupling is absurd because it will disconnect the U.S. itself from the rest of the world in the face of the complex web of economic relations of hubs that. Uh, from which China participate, which involve not only the two countries, but the US allies too. In 2019, around 100 countries around the world traded and invested more with China than with the US. Latin America, in absolute terms, you can already see that uh, it surpasses US with regards to investment. Today, China ranks number one, Spain comes second, and US comes third. If taken into account the, the combined, uh, all the information which surpassed in Brazil, which is the biggest economy in the region. Despite pressure from decoupling, China promoted the signing of the region, such as the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RC RCEP, in November 2020, which started uh, taking place now in January 2022, which involved a third of the global population and 29% of the world economy, being larger even than the European Union. The great complementarity between China, its economic and trade partners, and the US itself 
has been the main obstacle to decoupling them. Therefore, the, the, the decoupling is a very questionable uh, strategy in its uh, um, efficacy. Fourth, the US has launched a technological lockdown on China based on the 5G dispute. We all know that Huawei has the best 5G technology, better in terms of efficiency, efficacy, but also when it comes to its price and because it can run on 4G platforms. The evaluation of all consultancy groups of Western is that whoever is in the vanguard in the adoption of 5G technology will have a big technology in terms of its development and the absorption of the main productive uh, technologies in central productive areas with a huge impact in the productive forces in productivity. As China is the most advanced country in this area, what we expect is that China will be the one reaping the fruits of this. The US blockage of China in the field of semiconductors, the so-called chip war, is part of the technological mismatch or decoupling. It is very important that China will have difficulties regarding this blockage. But one should not believe in something unsurmountable. And especially because China today has a whole process of advancement based on, on a long-term industrial policy. Okay, now the term is a little bit short, which is made in China 2025, which uh, focuses on 10 sectors, which are considered the more structuring sectors in this process. Fifth and last thing in my speech, I'd like to highlight the shift from the moment which it was glorious to be rich to this another moment in we are in which we have a situation of prosperity, shared prosperity, common and shared prosperity. And I believe that the dual circulation, this new paradigm of developmental paradigm based on what I call the double dynamic, actually, actually a dynamic between the interaction between internal consumption, investment, industrial investment and technology and the international dynamics, um, exports, Silk Road, financial exports, they also represent a very powerful force to boost China uh, with regards to a modern socialism, uh, according to Chinese uh, criteria. This internal and external um, the dynamics, they, they, they strengthen themselves mutually and they propose to the rest of the countries in the world what the Chinese Communist Party has been called shared development. And it is in this sense of development that I believe is very important for Latin America. Why is that? Because neoliberalism, which emerged during the Reagan administration, laid the foundations for the US decline. The financialization of the economy as a result of neoliberalism is the culprit that kills the dynamism of the capitalism system itself. Credit and finance gradually became obstacles rather than driving forces of production. The pursuit of limited government uncontrolled labor market liberalization and the pursuit of profit led to a rapid accumulation of financial wealth for those at the top of the social pyramid and deindustrializes the North American economy. Biden packages have been leaking around 25 to 30% to Asian countries and China. 
Therefore, these companies only, they, they can only want uh, to make uh, money very quickly on a very short term horizon, which is an horizon which is not compatible with R&D uh, activities. Therefore, the US asks to countries such as Latin America from not using Chinese 5G technology, even if they don't have alternatives of their own to offer, not because they don't have companies, but because the companies prefer in the short term with apps. The three consequences of new liberalism, namely financialization of economy, increase of income and wealth, and the erosion of democracy are prevalent in all capitalist countries. And the United States, even being the richest and with the biggest military capability, is not an exception. China's strength lies exactly on the opposite, in searching the path of socialism with Chinese characters. This path follows the level of market, but attaches strategic importance to the role of the state. Once open to private investment, both national and international, China has been increasingly controlling distortions caused by, by the market, oligopoly and speculation, etc. Um, they're including the concentration of income. Regulation of economic activity acts to preserve competition and avoid financial bubbles and market distortions. As was clear in the suspension of the IPO of Ant Financial Services, in the stricter control over the real estate market and the control of tutorial services, which created indeed an inequality amongst distinct among Chinese people. Therefore, even in this situation, we have this conflict, which is extremely well defined and, uh, and defined and qualified. We know that China is going towards uh, um, being the, 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 the central place to develop the 4G and they, they have projects on this shared development project, especially now with uh, the Silk Road, the Belt and Road. Yeah. Right, one belt, one road. Which uh, it is transitioning from a proposition based uniquely on infrastructure towards something connected to industrial and technological partnerships. And that is exactly what interests Latin America. For us here in Latin America, China has already surpassed, at least for the big countries in the continent, has already surpassed the US with regards to economic and commercial relations. However, there is another type of insertion from Latin America this is necessary and uh, possible. In a world where the changes will accelerate, Latin America has to face its own challenges and must get out of the processes of an economy based on commoditization com and deindustrialization and search a new reindustrialization with new characteristics. The, the participation of Latin America in the fourth industrial revolution should not be uh, uniquely as a, a consumer of uh, platform capitalism, such as iFood, Uber, I, I, uh, Airbnb, without technological capacity, industrial and technological capacity, with in, in artificial intelligence, robotized um, industries, remote um, health, smart cities being outside of this framework. We cannot accept this division. Those who remain uh, simply as importer of technology and these innovations that this revolution is already producing in all spheres of society and productive activities will be on the periphery. 
submissed to the interests here in Latin America from the United States. The transformation of the productive model is the main challenge of Latin Americans to recover a path which allows to reach a considerable economic growth from a social perspective. Only producing and exporting mineral and agricultural commodities do not allow an equity-based development, do not allow an equity-based development. It is necessary another model that our region may be able to reach higher levels of industrialization and has the capacity to aggregate value, taking into um, having on base the quality of education, work, and R&D with the generation of better jobs. I repeat, it means a lot to Latin American development, the capacity to be able to uh, integrate the fourth uh, industrial revolution. It means we need to be alert to this conflict between US and China. And from our standpoint, a truly integration of Latin America is essential for projecting the Latin American strength based on the extraordinary relevance of its market, which today reaches almost 1 billion people. Project the potential of the fantastic natural resources of the region, such as oil, minerals, ag agricultural projects, and proteins, immense water reserves, and seek the modernity of insertion in the fourth revolution, fourth industrial revolution. In this process, uh, throughout the, our previous governments, we have created a series of advancements. And we want basically to be able to break with the Monroe Doctrine. We want that America, that Latin America be for the Latin Americans and not as the Americans wanted in the doctrine, Monroe Doctrine which meant America for North Americans, precisely the opposite. In all Latin America during the, the last premise, China has increased its presence. It has surpassed the United States as a, a, a perspective of partnership. And more than that, for all governments, democratics and populars as a reference, an international reference, in the field of socialism. That is to say, the only real socialism um, on the path of becoming effectively modern socialism. If this presence has grown here in Latin America, the conservative elites, they repeat with China the same pattern of commodity export, the same pattern of mineral extraction. China has been doing project in infrastructure and this new phase of uh, One Belt, One Road, which announced partnership in the areas of industrial and technology partnerships will be fundamental to Latin America. We cannot keep reproducing this model this inferiority complex of our elites and oligarchies, conservative oligarchies, which the only thing that they did was to submit themselves to the United States. The place of the United States, it's not with the US. Amer Latin American's place, as I have been always saying, is a place of independence jointly with China. And this independence, it's not from individual countries, it's from the region uh, together with China. Eu queria pedir licença para poder sair. Eu acho que a minha assessoria avisou que eu não ia... My, my, uh, my team said that I could not stay during the debate. I'll be, I'd love to, but I cannot. Why, since uh, we are on this moment of lots of activities, let's all remember that we have the possibility of electing President Lula once again, and my party is working very hard, and uh, as as with the other parties, 
the country, the, the parties that I believe to be the progressive ones. So I thank you so much. And I reiterate, once again, we'll do everything we can to win this election because it is fundamental for this relation, uh, Latin America and China.